Dolores Raybal. I'm the Executive Director of Conalma Health Foundation. I'm uh, Dr. Valerie romero Leggett. I'm Vice President for Diversity at the Health Sciences Center and also an Associate Professor in the Department of Family and Community Medicine. I'm Pat Boyle. I'm the Executive Director for the New Mexico Center for Nursing Excellence. My name is Kathy Lopez Bushnell and I work at the University of New Mexico Hospitals and I'm the Director of Nursing Education. Here, my name is Sheena Ferguson. I'm the Chief Nursing Officer at the University of New Mexico Hospitals. The nursing shortage in New Mexico is significant. Primarily, we're a rural state, so we have a large geographic area and a low population. So there are many rural communities of color that are isolated that do not have access to services. The quality of outcome the patients have and their safety in the hospitals are directly related to the number of nurses we have. By 2020, we're estimating that we'll be about 5,000 registered nurses short. So daily living, culture, ethnicity, gender, age are all things that nursing pay attention to when they're trying to help somebody uh, be in the best health care that they can possibly be. Cultural competency of healthcare professionals in New Mexico is a very serious problem because of health disparities. We have a predominantly Hispanic and Native American population. If you don't speak English and you come in to see a doctor or you're admitted to the hospital and you cannot tell them your pain or your problems, you may be misdiagnosed. And so we need to make sure that our healthcare workforce, including our nursing workforce, reflects the diversity of our population so that all segments of our population receive quality health care. Therefore, it is really critical that we do all that we can to invest in nursing. So we've had a wonderful partnership with the uh, Conalma Community Health Foundation and Project Diversity and the Office of uh, Diversity at the Health Sciences Center. And what that's really been is a, a way to provide uh, pipeline programs for our students are, uh, to go into the health professions fields. Project Diversity is a program that recruits minorities, underserved, and uh, students who are ethnic diverse into nursing. And so we're trying to bring in the people who know the culture and give them the skills, the education, the tools they need to care for patients. I'm Jessica Sanchez. I work for the Kalnama Health Foundation, and I am a director of the Project Diversity Grant. I'm Katie Gardner, and I work at Project Diversity. Mainly what we're trying to do is let them know that dreams don't happen just by themselves. And if they really want something, they could do it. And so we try and encourage them to see what it's like to be involved in science and math, but also you know the day-to-day -day things in the hospitals and in the nursing homes and the various locations that nurses work at. My name is Frankie Esquivel. Um, I just turned 16. I currently attend Highland High School, and I'm going to be a junior this year. My name is Stephanie Vidania. I go to Highland High School. I am 17, and I will be a senior this year. My name is Lizeth Mesa. I'm 18 years old, and I just graduated from Highland High School. I'll be attending University of New Mexico now. And Project Diversity helps us prepare for college by helping us like with our schoolwork and such as that. And we got a college advisor who tells us like the classes we should take in school and scholarships and things like that. It was pretty nice because like when I needed help on a homework assignment or something like that, I could go and talk to them and they could give me advice and stuff. Because sometimes going home, like my mom didn't really know how to do the math or things like that. And you're kind of on your own. Our instructor, Jessica, how she really fo focused on our grades and um, as like people of like who we were, like how we needed help and how she just organized um, having tutors for us and um, making fun, fun projects. Some of the activities we did was um, stitching. We went to the ER room. We dissected a pig. We did, um, we made chapstick. We, we did so many things. It was so much fun. My favorite one was the, the rat dissection. So we actually got to open up a, a real rat and got to see the insides of it. And <laughs> that was really fun for me, I guess, more of hands-on stuff for us to get to know and how it feels to actually work with someone or something. <laughs> well, my favorite thing that we did with the nurse mentor was um, a poster project. And we had to call them or meet with them, go get some coffee or something and ask them as many questions as we could and 
whatever they liked or whatever their answer was to our question, we posted it up in a in a poster and we presented it to the to the whole group the next day. My nurse mentor's name is Kim Brown and usually she works in the ER. So usually I follow her around and she shows me the things to do. Oh, I haven't done like IVs or nothing like that because I'm not certified. But I have like helped the patients. Like I'll ask them like, are you cold or do you want some water, a pillow? And like I'll come back into the room and give them a pillow or water, things such as that. Having my nurse mentor is amazing. I love her. She's a great teacher, a great, like I look up to her and she's, like, she makes me want to keep, like, that's what I want to do is nursing. Project Diversity, it's helped me to do better in school, and it's helped me to, like, really realize what I want to do after high school. My favorite thing was when we, as a group, we all got together and went to a park, and it was, like, meeting each other, getting to know each other, and thinking differently than what we usually do. Team is huge because it keeps people in line to be times that kids would be distracted, they would start to wander off, but they wanted to be part of the team. So they came back and often, you know, and I think all the kids experience that. I'd like to think that Project Diversity has been a life-changing experience for the students. I can see their eyes light up. I can see when the gears start to move in their head, when they get excited about science or math, or they get to experience what it's like in an emergency room. There's something there. There's a light that's turning on. And I also think that Unlike probably before, I don't think there's a kid in the program anymore who doesn't assume that they're going to go to college. And that's huge. Huge. The greatest long-term impacts of Project Diversity, I'd have to say what has been started with Call Mental Health Foundation. To my knowledge, I don't think that they'd had a nursing grant in the state. And so it's like a little spark that ignited, a, I hope, to be kind of forest fire or a bonfire, that it will really spread across the state to really encourage foundations and to encourage institutions to dedicate some work to getting these nursing positions filled. One of the best uh, outcomes we've observed in Project Diversity is the fact that the nurses are so committed to these students, that they bring them to their homes, they take them to the theater, they take them to lunch. And it's been a revelation in our experience to learn that nurses who are working are committed to their time, their energy, and their resources to teach these young people. And so we're going to take this mentoring program and take it statewide. And hopefully the snowball will take it nationwide. Collaborative partnership efforts work when you're trying to reach similar missions and goals. So I think that that's one of the, the best ways that we can really show a best practice for uh, reaching and addressing health provider shortage issues, as well as in cultural competence, really um, showing that uh, we're making a difference by trying to more uh, closely match the population of our state in the providers that we have for our state as well. So in addition to partnering with others on the funding, such as Robert Wood Johnson, Northwest Health Foundation, and New Mexico Community Foundation, we also partnered with community partners such as the University of New Mexico, Highlands High School, and the Native American Academy. The project could not have worked without all of the different partners coming together. We all had our own particular contribution. The Con Alma grant that we received for the Nursing Council of New Mexico allowed that entity to be born which is a group of nurses from around the state who have established themselves uh, some state committees to look at nursing education, nursing practice, and nursing recruitment and retention, as well as community action teams to get out in the communities and work issues at the community level. And so those are, those are the kinds of things our, our organization does, is to facilitate those things and make them happen. It's not necessarily always about the funding, but helping us link with others uh, to, to be uh, synergize our efforts. My message to policymakers about how our community will prevent a nursing shortage would be to look at the problem and know that it will not be fixed by a band-aid. We have to have a concerted program, a number of different programs that come together with resources uh, that will cross a number of years that focus on the ability to increase the number of nursing students. You have to have commitment for the amount of, of, of years of support for a program. 
Uh, and I, I think all of us working together can accomplish that. Thank you.